So before you start playing any song on the cello, you really want to make sure that your cello is in tune. But how do you do that? This video is going to show you how. Hi, my name is Liz from Cellomoji.com and I give you tips and tricks so that you can learn all of your favorite songs on the cello. If you're new to this channel, thanks for stopping by. Be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it so you won't miss out on any other Cellomoji videos. All right, so getting into tuning, you're going to need something that's going to give you a solid A. So whether that is a piano that is in tune, uh, you can use a whole bunch of different apps. Uh, there is an actual tuner that's like a device that's separate that you can use. Uh, some people use a tuning fork. There are many different ways where you can get your A from. Um, oftentimes the frequencies of the A can range from 440 hertz to 442 hertz. To be totally honest, I actually tune myself to 441 because um, I have often found that I need to switch back and forth between 440 and 442. So when I practice at 441, I find that that can sort of help me adapt quickly to either tuning that is necessary. But probably one of the more common ones that is generally used for tuning in schools and also in lessons is probably going to be 440. Hopefully you already have a tuner at this point because it is really helpful to use when you are uh, learning scales or different songs. It's a really great way to check your intonation. So if you don't already have one, make sure you either go out and buy a device. Uh, there's definitely ones that are like multifunctional devices that have a metronome and a tuner in it as well. Um, or go and download an app. There's so many different apps out there. Um, I'll leave a few suggestions in the description box below of things that I have and use as well as different apps that I use as well. So today, while I am showing you how to tune my cello, I will be using an app off of my iPad. Um, it's one that I highly recommend. I made a video about it and I'll leave a link in the description up above and below as well. While every app and device is slightly different in how it is used, um, essentially the concept is the same. You, you have this meter that tells you whether you are too high or too low in your A, and e essentially you want your meter to be kind of right in the middle saying that your pitch is in tune. The key to using any of these tuning devices is that you really want to make sure you're using nice long bows. It doesn't do you any good if you're just like sawing away at an A rather quickly because the tuner won't be able to process that pitch fast enough. So you really want a nice long steady bow and try not to vary too much in the speed. Uh, I know this thing can sometimes be a little bit of an adjustment and sometimes a little bit challenging but give it a try and keep working at it and you'll see how quickly your tuner will react to the pitch. Also, I don't recommend that you play the note and then like lift your bow off and then check the meter. You should actually be checking the meter while you're playing the note at the same time because if you are checking the note after your bow leaves the string, it's really catching the overtones of the pitch and that's not necessarily an accurate way of judging your intonation. So really while you're bowing and holding a nice long steady bow is when you should be checking the tuner to make sure that it is centered. So for purposes of this video, I purposely made my cello very much out of tune. But in general, if you're taking good care of your instrument and you're leaving it in a safe place where the temperature is relatively stable and it's not getting bumped around a lot, you'll find that it probably will stay fairly in tune most of the time. You probably will only need to do minor adjustments here and there. Today we'll mainly be working with fine tuners and I'll talk a little bit about using the pegs to tune uh, when you need to. Okay, so I have my tuner going and what I'm going to do is you're always gonna start out with the A. So whether something is actually giving you the pitch of the A, or in this case, I'm using the meter on my app. So I'm going to play the A. And as you can see, the meter is well off of center. You really want it where it says like zero, and some devices actually have like two lights. Like if it's red on the sides, this means it's either too low or too high. And then when it's on pitch, it's gonna have a nice green light or some apps even have a nice smiley face that appears. So let's look at that meter again and hear the note that I'm playing. So it's pretty flat. So do you remember how to turn the tuners to make it higher? Okay, so this is another perspective of what you're probably gonna see when you're looking at your own cello down on the fine tuners. So remember, if I am turning this way, I am tightening it. So in other words, I'm making the pitch go higher. But if I'm turning this way, 
that means I am loosening the pitch. So I'm going to tune my A now to make the A go higher. If you notice here, the A is still not quite in tune, so let's keep going. Maybe just a little bit more of an adjustment, so I'm going to keep going a little bit more. too high so I'm turning it down. So it is now fairly stable on the zero marking of my tuner app. So I'm going to keep going now on to the next string which is the D string. And you can see my D is way too high. It's way on the sharp side so I'm going to turn the D down. our G string. My G is a little low, so let's turn it higher. Maybe too high. So that's approximately right. Um, remember when you're tuning, you may not get it right on the first try, so make sure that you keep maneuvering a little bit turn here, a little bit more of a turn there, until you are reaching the good point of being in tune. Now with smaller cellos, remember little turns actually may change the pitch a lot. I'm on a full size cello here, so I may have to turn a little bit more in order to make uh, a pitch difference. Every cello is a little bit different, so make sure that you're testing it out for yourself to see how much you need to turn in order to change the pitch. All right, so now we're gonna check our last string, the C string. It's really flat, so I'm gonna turn it up. Keep going. strings in tune. So now that all four of my strings are in tune, what I always like to do is I like to play my two open strings together. So here I'm going to play A and D together, D and G together, C and G together. So now you can actually hear what the strings sound like together when they are in tune. And this is a super helpful skill for you to practice for two reasons. One, later on when you're playing more advanced music and you need to play two notes at once, this is a great introduction to that. You're trying to keep your bow even across both strings so that you can hear both notes equally. And remember, when you're playing two strings together, it is not about forcing down the bow harder, but you have to change the angle of your bow so that you can hear both notes equally. And two, another bonus of hearing uh, the two open strings together is you may not always have the luxury of just uh, tuning each and every open string together. And uh, sometimes just they might just give you an A, which is often what happens in say professional orchestras or more advanced orchestras. They're just going to give you the A and then they expect you to tune the rest of your instrument. So off of that, sometimes a really quick way is to recognize like, oh, okay, this sounds in tune or this doesn't sound in tune and adjust accordingly. So how you build that up is to make sure you tune each string with a tuner and then practice hearing the open strings together. I will guarantee you the more you practice like that, you too will learn to recognize when your open strings are in tune with each other. So another way of tuning your instrument is by tuning with harmonics. 
uh, when you start, you definitely need something to tell you whether your A is in tune or not. Your A is your given, so that means that you actually have to have the A string in tune before you start doing harmonics. Uh, because you're going to tune all the other strings based off of a solid given A. While this is definitely a common way of tuning the instrument, I don't think it is as accurate as, say, using a tuner or learning to hear the open strings in tune. It's a great way to double check and triple check that your instrument is in tune, and sometimes you just don't have devices lying around to help you tune your instrument, and you're not totally sure whether you know if the open strings are in tune or not, harmonics are a great way of checking uh, that your strings are in tune with each other. Again, make sure you are playing the open strings together after you tune with the harmonics, and that way you'll still be drilling in, learning to listen that the open strings are in tune together. Okay, so how to tune with a harmonic is you're going to play the harmonic A here, And then you're going to find your fingered A on the D string, but instead of playing it pressed down, you're going to play it in harmonic form. So you can hear that my harmonic A that's on the D string is not in tune. Now this is where it gets a little tricky with no devices to tell you which way to go. You're going to have to guess which way to turn your fine tuners. If you guess that you need to turn your tuner higher on the D string, you are correct. My D string is flat, so I'm going to turn it up. And now, double check to see if it's any closer. So here's the high A again. So it's still a little flat, so I'm going to turn it a little bit higher. And there you go. To me, that sounds pretty darn close, these two A's. So from there, um, then I'm going to assume that the A and D are in tune with each other, and I'm going to try playing the open strings. So to me, it's not quite perfect, but also my strings are a little bit on the old side, so sometimes harmonics may not always ring true. And this is also why harmonics can be a little bit tricky because, I mean, you could play an A harmonic, you can play it a little high and you can play it a little low, and same with the other ones, you can kind of like make it sound like an A harmonic, but it may not be totally in tune. So it is just kind of a good way to double check, uh, triple check, and also a good way of figuring out, um, you know, if you don't have any other devices around to help you try to tune. So in this case, I needed to actually turn my D up a little bit higher in order to make my two open strings sound good together. After you've used different ways of tuning after a while, you're going to start to recognize when the open strings don't sound right with each other, and then you can sort of adjust your fine tuners accordingly. But you know, I didn't just wake up one day and know how to tune it myself. I had to practice over the years as well to develop an ear to hear what kind of fifths would sound good on my cello. Okay, so let's address a little bit of tuning with these pegs up here. If you can try to avoid tuning with your pegs, then I would highly recommend it unless you are a more intermediate advanced player and you feel comfortable using them. At some point or another, everybody does have to use their pegs because oftentimes with like big weather changes or something gets bumped or something or another, inevitably we have to use our pegs. But in general, we like to use our fine tuners because it's usually easier to tune with them. This can be difficult for some people, so what I suggest is that you go very slowly when you are using the pegs to tune and just be patient with yourself. Uh, some cellos are a little bit more stubborn than other, and I've definitely played some cellos where um, I had to work really hard to make those pegs stay in tune, and um, especially if you are younger and you're not quite sure or you're feeling uncomfortable about it, I know it can be a struggle, but again, be patient with it and try to follow these steps and I think eventually over time you're going to get more confident and tune just great with the pegs. So one of the reasons why you might need to tune with your peg is because your fine tuners have been tightened all the way down as far as it goes and it just won't tighten anymore. So the pitch is still too flat 
and you still need to raise it up. So step number one will be to make sure you loosen your fine tuner so it gives you some space. So take a look at my G string fine tuner here. As you can see, it is pretty low right now and soon I won't be able to go much further down. So this is what I was talking about in terms of if you need to make some more space for your fine tuner, what I would do as step number one is make sure you are loosening the fine tuner so that you have way more space now. So now when you are using the peg to help you tune, you're getting to the approximate location of the pitch you're trying to find, in this case the G string, and then now I'll have room to either go higher or lower with my fine tuner to finish tuning the rest of the way. Step number two will be secure your cello. So what I mean by this is, if you're just kind of like off here and doing this, it's going to be really hard to turn the peg and be really secure. Oftentimes when I'm tuning the, with the pegs, especially with the A and D string, I'll actually turn the cello to face me so that I'll have a little bit more leverage turning the pegs or sometimes I'll even stand up to do it because it'll give me more leverage to turn my pegs. And if it's too high, then just go ahead and lower your end pin until it is at a shorter height like here and it's way easier to turn. Step number three, make sure you are loosening the peg before you tighten the peg. So what I mean by that is loosening the peg means you're turning towards your face. So if you're loosening the peg, you're turning towards your face. And then when you want to tighten the peg, you're turning it away from your face. So you're turning it this way. Or if I was facing away from my cello, then loosening it would be turning forwards like this and then tightening would be turning it backwards like this. Um, I don't always really t tune my pegs this way unless it's the G or C string because I get good leverage this way. Um, but just in case you had two different ways of turning it, you're either turning it to your face to loosen or away, turning it this way to tighten. Next tip, make sure you are turning your pegs slowly. So one of the things I hear about is a lot of people get really worried that the string is just going to snap and break off. Oftentimes I would say sometimes those reasons could be because you're just tightening it too fast. You're just forcing it and stretching the string too quickly and it might snap like that. Now with cello strings, um, if the manufacturer had made the string poorly, there is a chance it could snap as you are tuning the string or if the string is super old, it may snap. Um, but in general, if you're just being careful and just slowly moving it, you should be just fine. So this next tip I know can feel a little bit uh, too aggressive to a cello because I know we always talk about how wood instruments are fragile and we should be careful with them. And this is still true, but when you are using your pegs, you need to kind of have this jamming in motion while you're turning it. So as I am tightening my peg, if I am just like turning it, then there's a really high chance that it's just gonna loosen up and it's not going to stick. So that's another common problem that people find that when they're trying to use their pegs that for some reason it's just not gonna stay and it keeps slipping backwards. So you're gonna have to do like a, kind of like a jamming inwards motion. So in towards the, the peg box here, you're trying to jam it in while you're turning at the same time. Obviously, like, be careful. It's not like you're trying to break the thing or anything, but you're going to need a little bit of an inward motion. Keep in mind, these pegs are not glued into the cello here, but some cellos, you know, the pegs just don't fit very well or, um, you know, it, it's, it's like expanded or contracted with the weather. So you're gonna have to be patient with it and try to make sure you're using that jamming in motion when you're turning your peg. You may not get it totally perfect. Uh, when you are tuning with your peg, have your tuner on and get to like an approximate location of the pitch you're trying to find and then use the fine tuners the rest of the way. I think you'll be surprised to see how much uh, pitch change there can be with the fine tuners. So sometimes, you know, you may not find the perfect center pitch with just the peg. So I would recommend just get to the approximate location and then use the fine tuners the rest of the way. This last tip here is is for those who have strings that are just completely undone. So what I mean by that is the string is so loose that it's completely unwound here and it's like basically falling off the cello. If you notice on the peg, there's going to be two little holes, kind of like a needle and an eye. And if the string is not going through that hole there, 
then what you're going to have to do is restring that string onto your cello. And we'll cover that in another video. For today, we're just talking a little bit about basics of using the pegs and the fine tuners. So there you have some of the basics of tuning the cello with fine tuners, using apps and devices, as well as a little bit of tuning with the pegs. If there are any questions that I haven't addressed in this video, be sure to leave them in the comments below. Um, I know that tuning can be a little bit daunting, but with practice, you're going to be able to tune just fine. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!